So um, welcome uh, this evening to tonight's masterclass goal setting um, with Mark Fulton. This is a great way to um, begin the new year and, um, and to take a look at the SMART goal, goal format. Um, Mark has some, some excellent slides with, uh, for us this evening and, and some great teaching. So I'm really excited um, to welcome him. Um, before I turn over the, the mic, I'm going to uh, go ahead and pray for us, um, and then we'll get started. So uh, won't you join me in prayer? Um, gracious Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather um, virtually. I, I pray that you be present in this, um, this virtual community setting, that you bless this time, um, that you, you place a special blessing upon Mark as he leads us through this, this information, and that um, in goal setting, that, that it be an opportunity for us to um, to honor you and, and to, to devote ourselves to um, a, a focused and uh, energetic new year. Um, and as we continue to seek ways to, to serve you and, and your kingdom. And um, I pray all of these things in Jesus name. Amen. Alrighty. So if you don't mind, uh, make sure your microphone is muted and I will go ahead and turn it over to Mark. All right. Thank you. Welcome one and all. Um, hopefully this will be a uh, productive uh, master class for you as we look toward 2021 and the months that lie ahead. Uh, as I mentioned in a little blurb for this class, uh, we're going to be talking about some tools that can be applied to the process of setting and achieving goals. So we'll be working through those. You'll see them on a slide that Joel will be putting up and also in the documents you can download for uh, future use. And I recommend you download them because they're, uh, at least one of them is uh, something that you can actually fill in different segments of uh, as you uh, plot your way to your goals. So uh, to keep this simple, uh, we're going to talk about what a goal is and then talk about what uh, a SMART goal is. A SMART goal, and SMART is an acronym, S-M-A-R-T, that we'll get into in just a moment so that you have a goal that's actually achievable and uh, measurable. So first of all, what I'd like everybody to do is to, if you haven't already, think about a goal that you would like to achieve in 2021. Uh, we could do this with a show of hands. How many people have already figured out a goal that you have for this year? Raise your hand, okay. And if you haven't, you can think of one quickly, even if it's not really one that you uh, will pursue down the road. But for the purposes of this exercise, it would be good to have one in mind as we walk through these steps. So I have uh, chosen the goal of being a better husband. So uh, with that in mind, uh, we're gonna see if that's a goal that first of all meets our criteria, and if not, how we can uh, make it meet these criteria. So first of all, um, you know, we have goals like, and I could, I could ask, I was thinking about asking for people to share their goals, but I don't think I'll do that right now. But very typical New Year's resolution goals are lose weight, uh, start exercising, do these kind of things that we all think about we should have done last year. So let's do it this year. And uh, so let's start with that. And mine is to be a better husband. So the first thing we want to do is to test the goal. And by that, I mean, ask myself, why do I want to achieve this goal? Can I commit to this goal? Can I see myself achieving this goal? Now, those are pretty heavy questions with the goal that I've chosen. Uh, and we'll get into the more specifics in a moment. But one of the first things that I would say about my goal that I've purposely chosen is that it's got a problem. To be a better husband lacks some specifics. For example, how, why, what do I do to move toward that goal? It's one thing to say, be a better husband, but then how do I know when I've achieved that goal? So we are going to apply certain measurements to our goals to make sure that we can figure out if we've achieved them or not. So you have to ask yourself, why have I, asked, why have I set this goal for myself? And if you can't articulate that why, that's a problem right off the bat because you need the motivation of the answer to that 
in order to keep going toward meeting that goal. So in my case, why is because I think it would please my wife if I were a better husband. And that's why enough for me. Uh, can I commit to that goal? Yes, but I'm not sure what I'm committing to because being a better husband is pretty anomalous. It's very, you know, it's kind of shapeless. And I need to bring some specificity to that before I can really commit to it. And that's what we're gonna get into. And can I see myself achieving that goal? Yes, after 22 years of marriage, I think that I think I can achieve that goal as long as I know what the goal is. So in your own individual cases, these are gonna be questions you're gonna to have to ask yourself about the goal you set for yourself. Because if not, if you can't answer those questions, you need to refine that goal to make it more specific and more achievable. So some people say lose weight. Some people say, oh, this year I wanna exercise more. Some say, well, I wanna be a better person. I wanna be a better Christian. All very worthy sounding goals, but they all have problems that we're gonna address specifically in a moment. So the first step is to use what I call SMART goals. This is a uh, kind of a measurement tool to figure out if the goals we've set for ourselves are really achievable. So I guess you can go on to the SMART goals slide. There we go. And it says time management is especially important for reaching goals. Once you've identified a goal and carefully considered the best path to reaching it, allotting the time to each of these steps along the path becomes critical. This is truth, true of both personal and professional goals. Next slide. So next slide, these are the things we're gonna do. First of all, uh, we wanna list our goals. Now we could have more than one goal, obviously, for the year. Uh, mine is relational in nature. So we'll just stick to that for now, but uh, it may be a physical, a mental, spiritual goal and whatever it is, uh, that's the first thing we're gonna focus on. Then we're gonna prioritize them. Obviously we could have more than one and they may have some priority order as far as what's more important than the other. And some of them might conflict with each other as we go through this model. So uh, you'll see that as we move ahead. All right, next slide. So the first thing we want to do is to test the goal. And we have to answer these questions, okay? So mine is, I want to be a better husband. Why do I want to achieve this goal? If I can't articulate that, then already I'm in trouble because I, I don't know why I want to do it, so why would I do it? So if I ask myself the question, why do I want to achieve this goal? It would be, uh, answers that come to mind would be, well, to please my wife. Uh, I love my wife and I want her to be happy. And so being a better husband, I think, would make her happy. And that's, that's an okay reason for wanting to do this. Point number two, can I emotionally commit myself to start and finish this goal? Okay, uh, I think so. Uh, you know, we've been married 22 years, as I said. So I think that um, I've got the emotional commitment to reach this goal as long as it's not too taxing. So we'll find out about that later. But yes, I want to do this. It will be emotionally fulfilling for me and I think for her too. So this is a goal that in my mind is worthy and I can make a commitment to it. Can I see myself reaching this goal? I think I can. Uh, again, I've got a pretty good track record over uh, 22 years of marriage. So uh, I think that if I have the right tools, the right map, if you will, to reach this goal, uh, I think that I can see myself reaching it. And finally, if I apply the SMART goals standards, uh, I will refine this goal in such a way that it'll give me some real mileposts, some measurement tools to see if I'm actually advancing toward my goal. So that's where we're gonna go next, the SMART goals. All right, so you've all identified a goal. These are the standards that we're going to apply to your goal. And if you can't answer these, each of these standards, if they can't apply them, then we need to refine your goal so that you can. Okay, so let's look at each one at a time. 
S in SMART is specific. Is your goal clear and unambiguous? Be a better boss, be a better husband. What does that mean? Already I'm in trouble. <laughs> because what does better mean? Uh, you know, more helpful, more affectionate. What does being a better husband mean? So I need to think about these specifics as far as what a better husband looks like. And so now I'm thinking, okay, uh, I, I have some criteria that I can use to apply to this goal so that I know when I reach that measure of specificity, how can I be a better husband? Uh, I think off the top of my head, I could be more helpful. I could be more affectionate. I could be a lot of things that, you know, more just doing things about around the house or doing more or, or offering to go out more or making suggestions. So, you know, and you can come up with these specifics for your own, for yourself, but you need to have a clear idea of what the specifics of your goal is, how and how much. The M in SMART goals is measurable. Now this is, gets a little dicey here because, okay, how do I measure my goal of being a better husband? Uh, how do I know if, if you can't measure it, how do you know you've achieved it? So I would have to apply some standards there to say, well, if I set myself a goal of being a better husband by uh, inviting my wife out to dinner once a week, that's measurable. We go out to dinner. We, we used to do that. We've stopped doing that in recent years. And we've ha actually had this conversation about getting back to our Thursday night out routine because uh, we enjoyed that. And Thursday nights wasn't too crowded. So there's a way to, in a very simple way, simply go out and spend an evening out together at dinner. So that's just, excuse me, one example. Is your SMART goal attainable? That's an important question because a lot of people set very lofty goals for themselves and immediately set themselves up for failure because they're not attainable. Uh, you know, I want to be president of the United States. I mean, something not that silly, but, you know, I want to do something that may or may not be attainable. Well, if it's not attainable, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. So it's an important question to ask about your goal. Can I actually do this? Can I reach this goal? Is it realistic? The R in SMART is relevant. Is the goal relevant to your life? or your work, or your profession, or your relationships, or your, your church life. Because if it's not relative, relevant, you're very quickly going to lose the motivation to reach it. So it needs to be relevant. In my case, being a better husband is very relevant. I mean, my marriage is the most important relationship in my life other than that, that with the Lord. So it's very relevant to my future. And so there's no question for that for me. But if you have a goal that you're not so sure if it's relevant for right now, maybe for the future. That's, that's an important test to make sure because if it's not relevant in the here and now, and you begin down this path to achieve this goal, you'll find yourself either losing interest, losing motivation, because well, I don't really see how this fits into my life now and maybe next year. And before long, you know that you've, uh, the goal has kind of slipped off to the side of the road. And finally, is it time bound? Now, this is a tough one because a lot of us set goals for ourselves that have no target, time target. And so if it's not by a certain time, how do you know when you're going to reach it? You need a deadline. Can it be reached by meeting a schedule? or smaller goals along the way. Uh, if not, it's easy to push any daily effort toward that goal aside, because hey, you know, I've got all year to do this. In my case, I set a goal of being a better husband. And one of the facets of that is to take my wife out to dinner once a week on a Thursday night. So it's time bound in the sense that I've committed myself to a specific action that's measurable, attainable, relevant because we both like eating out and it's time bound because it's once a week. So 
you know, that's a, a very simple example, but I think it's, you get the drift of where I'm going with that. Okay, next slide. So once you've, and again, you probably have more than one goal for 2021. So that would be uh, a way of, you would restate this goal in a way that would be more specific than just being a better husband. In my case, it would be being a better husband by, and just one example would be to invite my wife out to dinner once a week on a Thursday night so we'd have a good time together. Now, there are other ways of achieving that goal uh, to say, I love you more often. What's more often? Well, can seem a little programmed to say, well, every day, but why not? I, I'm going to tell my wife I love her every day. And hopefully she'll believe that and say, okay, very good, dear. I love you too. So there are other ways to uh, reach your goal by uh, making them time out. And you can see examples there on the screen. I'll reduce my, th this seminar was obviously addressed to business owners. That's what I used to do. So uh, reduce staff turnover and increase productivity. Those are all business type goals that really don't relate to us here. Okay, next slide. All right, uh, so those are the SMART goals. Those are kind of the, that's the acronym for testing and refining your goal. Now the second tool we're gonna to talk about <clears throat> is called the goal map. And I need to reduce my screen or something because I just uh, had the goal map up there. But so, there we go, hold on a second. I'm trying to figure out how to get my screen to not be my whole screen. Anyway, we'll just do it this way. Um, so once you have identified your SMART goal and you've got all those aspects of it identified and spelled out, then the goal map is the, what you, is the tool you can use to uh, plot a course to reaching that goal. So let's do the next slide. First thing you do is write out your SMART goal and state it in such a way that meets all the criteria of SMART goals. Next slide. And you describe the benefits that you expect to receive from achieving your desired goal. Now, this is a big uh, deal because goals are meant to inspire us. So if we set a goal for ourselves, in 2021, it needs to be a goal that excites us and inspires us. It, it generates energy that we want to achieve it. Otherwise, it's going to be a burden. It's going to be something that uh, we wake up every day kind of wishing we hadn't set it. So this is an important aspect of this because uh, what if we can't identify the benefits of reaching this goal, we're going to quickly lose interest in it and motivation to achieve it. So what would be the benefits of my wanting to be a better husband? But you can see some of the aspects of that emotional, relational, spiritual, material. Uh, the emotional benefits for me would I feel good about doing the things I've committed to do. And the feedback I get from my wife would be a benefit, relational. Uh, emotional, I feel good about myself for wanting to be better than I am now and to uh, do things purposely that would help me to achieve that goal. So, it, and this is a way in this step of the, the goal map is to identify what those benefits are so that you can remind yourself that they, there's a reason you're doing this. There's a payoff for you to achieve this goal. And depending on what your goal is, it could be relational, it could be spiritual. It might be, uh, you know, we, we mentioned some goals early on that uh, like mine initially were not specific enough. Like uh, I'd like to be more spiritual this year. What does that mean? I'd like to be a better Christian. What does that mean? How can you identify a payoff of that if, you, if it's not specific enough to know what that means? So whatever your goal is, if you apply the SMART goal concepts, 
you should be able to identify the benefits of achieving that goal. Okay, next slide. So consider uh, pursuing a goal like taking a trip and you want to get from destination A to your point A to point B. And if you're uh, driving, the thing you would use, the old fashioned thing you would use would be a roadmap. I don't know that they exist anymore. Uh, you'd use Google Maps or something like that, but excuse me. So you need to know how to get to your destination. It's one thing for me to say, I wanna be a better husband. How do I get there? So in cases of whatever your goal might be, there might be methodologies for you to follow to self-improvement. It might be workout, lose weight. I mean, you know, all the typical goals we hear about and think about at the beginning of the year, but we need to know what they are because like any trip you might take, <clears throat> there might be uh, detours that you'll encounter that you didn't expect, uh, roadblocks. <clears throat> so you need to think ahead, figure out, plan a trip that you're going to get from point A to point B and how you're going to do that. And if your goal is something that's more measurable, uh, where you can take note of daily progress, monthly progress toward your goal, that's a good thing. And you can set that up in advance and say, okay, by next month, I want to be here. You can pick a date and the following month and the month after that, so that you know that you're on track. Uh, if you've ever taken a road trip and imagine all of us have it one time or another, you have an idea of when you want to reach your destination, how you're going to get there by what route you're going to get there. Uh, what some of the uh, uh, markers along the way might be, you know, maybe you're gonna have to stay a night or two at a hotel or something on your way there. <clears throat> so these are all good things to think about in advance so that when you have set your goal and you've set out to reach your goal, uh, you know that you're moving along and hitting a mile posts along the way. Okay, next slide. So another thing that we, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna take a drink of water here. <clears throat> like a trip, uh, there are resources you may need to reach your goal. Uh, a specific route to your goal might say, well, I have to, might involve money, it might involve uh, other kinds of resources, educational resources, whatever it might be, to get from where you are to where you want to go. Time, people, sometimes people are a very important resource for us to reach our goal because if they figure very prominently in our goal, we have to get them on board in whatever role that may be. So uh, again, the idea of a goal map is to think about that <clears throat> ahead of time. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Next slide. Another thing when you use the map as a metaphor is what's the terrain uh, between here and there? Are there obstacles on your way toward your goal? It's good to think about that in advance because you don't want to encounter an obstacle as much as possible unexpectedly and have no plan for achieving it or for overcoming that obstacle. So if I apply that to my goal, uh, wanting to be a better husband, are there obstacles to that? Yes. Uh, selfishness, wanting to, my own time to myself, uh, wanting to just, you know, do my own thing. <clears throat> so I have to understand that maybe being a better husband <clears throat> is, is going to run, boy, I'm sorry about this. I'm getting hoarse here. <clears throat> being a better husband is going to 
maybe wrote, run into some roadblocks. Uh, maybe it would be a roadblock like my wife says, uh, why don't you go to this flower show with me? I'm not a big flower show fan. I see you laughing, Emily. I see you laughing. So, because uh, she knows my wife's big into flower shows. And so I might have to say, well, you know, uh, okay, well, let's do that. We actually went to the Philadelphia Flower Show a few years ago, and I was not terribly keen on it, but I had a great time. So the obstacle was my own ignorance in a way and resistance to doing something that I thought I wasn't going to enjoy, and I turned out enjoying. So that for me was a great terrain obstacle that I overcame, and I'm glad I did. So there are going to be obstacles between you and your goal. And it's better to think about them ahead, whether they might be money or uh, commitment, some other kind of resource that you might need. Uh, it's always good to think about those things in advance so that you can either plan for them or if you can't uh, overcome the obstacles, at least have a contingency plan. Otherwise you could be stopped dead in your tracks as you're trying to uh, reach this goal. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> Timetable is important. Um, I think one of the greatest failures that people uh, experience when they set goals for themselves is that they really don't make it time bound. They don't make a, a timetable. They don't have a time when they want to actually achieve the goal. It's kind of open-ended. And when that happens, it's very easy. Human nature is such that uh, we can forgive ourselves and like just keep pushing that timetable out more and more and more. So if we have a timetable, uh, I want to go to the gym once a week. I want to go out to dinner with my wife once a week. That's time bound. It's a timetable that I can make sure that I, I hit. And if I don't hit it every week, at least I know I haven't hit it. Some goals aren't that easy to apply a timetable to. So there may be some aspect of your goal that you can identify as uh, time oriented. And that will help you stay on track and know if you're falling behind, if you're ahead of schedule. So it's an important management tool. <clears throat> Next slide. <clears throat> Go ahead. Oh, that's it. So. Um, with the, I, that idea in mind of, uh, applying the smart goal principles to your goal, and then, uh, having a goal map, once you've identified a smart goal and mapping it out might seem like a lot of work. I've used this with uh, various seminars and actually did it with the FPC team some years ago. And, uh, I can't speak for the results, but. It seemed to have gone over well, right, Belina? Uh, it was, uh, it, it's something that, it's a tool that uh, really helps you achieve and feel accomplishment in reaching a goal that you have identified that's important to you. And we all feel good but when we achieve things, what we want to achieve, we set out there for ourselves. So this is a way to kind of reinforce that and guarantee that rather than just say, well, I want to be a better person this year. I want to be a better Christian this year. Uh, you know, we could take any one of those and start talking about, okay, <clears throat> a worthy spiritual goal is I want to be a better Christian. Okay. Is that specific enough? What's that mean? How do you know when you reach that goal? Uh, is it measurable sometime this year? I'll achieve the goal of being a better Christian. I don't know. Uh, is it attainable? Probably, but without thinking through what the uh, necessary components of that goal are, how will I know when I've attained it? Is it relevant? Yes, I, I'm a Christian already. Being a better Christian is a good thing, as far as I can tell. So this is something I want to do. Is it time bound? Sometime this year. I will become a better Christian <laughs> or, you know, once we start refining that goal down, 
saying, well, I want to engage in uh, devotions. You know, maybe I've slacked off on my devotions. And if I begin doing devotion on a regular basis again, that's a pretty good specific way of building myself up spiritually. And so that would probably be a good uh, attainable, measurable daily devotions way of improving my spiritual life. So having said that, um, we've got some time left tonight. Is there anything we want to do as far as Q&A goes? Yeah. So uh, Mark, uh, first of all, thank you for, for presenting this, um, this for us. So uh, before, we, before we move to Q&A, just uh, so everybody, just as a reminder, if you've got questions, anything related to SMART goals um, and goal maps and at really anything goal related at all, we've got the, the guru of goals here. Um, with us tonight so um type like your that. questions in the in the chat um and i'll formulate them and and pose them to mark and he can uh, lead us through we've already got a, a couple in there um i'm going to sneak mine in first and then we'll go to we'll go to casey's and then we'll just kind of go down the list um so mark i i love the the way that you present the smart goal format in conjunction with the tool of the the goal map um kind of the practical things to, to keep you on track um, with that in mind, uh, specifically on the, the goal map as well, could you just share briefly some maybe recommendations or things that you've seen people find success as far as practical ways to track their goals? So do I stick a post-it on my mirror? Do I get a planner? What, what are some, some good practical, tangible tools that I can employ to make sure that I'm tracking my goals and, and sticking with it? Um, rather than saying it and set it and forget it, right? All right. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, yes, you need some kind of tool, uh, whether it's a diary of some kind or something that you use to kind of track your goal, as you say. So once you've identified <clears throat> a SMART goal and you've kind of plotted the goal map toward it, uh, I think a personal journal is probably the best way to do this. Uh, many of us do that already. And it's a way to measure, not only measure your progress, but also as those of you who use a journal know, it's an accountability tool. There's my journal sitting here on my desk waiting for an entry today. And so it, it becomes a very tangible way of, in a sense, reminding you, forcing you to make some kind of entry today. Now, I've had, uh, positive and negative experience over my years with journals, uh, depending on the approach I took. But overall, I found them to be very helpful because they're a very uh, easy tool to use. You know, there were some that were highly specific and very detailed and, you know, all these different facets of your daily journal entry. I found that to be a little onerous. So whatever you use, whether it's a diary or whatever, something like that that will help you uh, not only stay on track and put a little pressure on you day by day, but give you a record of your success. Because, you know, we all like to know that we've accomplished something. And so, especially in achieving a goal, if we can see that we are on track and we can look back over the course of a month or two or more, and that we've actually attained these these roadmap, these uh, goalposts on our trip, it makes us more motivated to continue on. So I'd say probably a journal of some kind would be the best way to measure and to keep yourself motivated to going after it. Awesome. Great. Yeah. And, and on that note, Casey mentioned it earlier in the chat, but the Better Tomorrow Journal um, is, is a great way to do that. Exactly. Too, I think. That's a great... Good plug, Casey. That's, a, that's good. <laughs> Casey's all over it. Thanks, thanks, Mark. Um, that's helpful. Um, so our, our next question uh, is related to the number of goals and, and the timetable. So um, what is your opinion on the number of goals that we set at one time or within a particular season and how we manage that? That's a great question, too. Uh, I think one of the first mistakes we can make and may often make especially at this time of year is setting too many goals for ourselves and we're quickly overwhelmed. That's why, uh, you know, we may have a laundry list of a dozen goals. And if you start applying some of these uh, principles, the SMART goal principles, someone will get weeded out right away because they're not 
they're not specific, they're not measurable, they're, you know, they're not attainable. So that, that's a good um, standard to apply to if you have a longer list of goals. That will weed it down pretty quickly. Uh, beyond that, if you have, let's say, a handful of really important goals that meet these criteria and that you really feel are important for you to achieve this year, then the next thing that I would do would say prioritize them. Because as uh, the weeks and months pass, you may find yourself struggling to keep up with that many goals. And some of them may actually have to be deferred to next year or jettisoned because you know that's not as important. Goal number five is not as important to goal number as goal number one. So, you know, I'm more of a believer in having a couple of goals, maybe a, a personal goal. Uh, I'm retired now and I've uh, dissolved my business. So, but if I had a, a business, a professional goal, I would say those are two areas of a working person's life to say, in my personal life, I want to achieve this. In my professional life, I want to achieve that. And probably that's, I mean, you can have a, a third as a spiritual goal. I'd say, you know, uh, three goals, personal, work, spiritual, not in that order necessarily, would probably be the max that I would recommend. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, all right. So, so moving on, uh, so we've set our goals and we're working towards it. The next question uh, talks about regarding the, the roots and the approach as we're in the season of pursuing our goal. Um, so is there a time when you would cut your losses on a way that isn't working and try a new approach. And on that note, how do you know if a goal, if it's not working um, once you're in the process of pursuing your goal? Well, I think that's where the SMART goal uh, format comes into play because you've set up for yourself a, 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 and the goal map, you've set up for yourself some standards to figure out if you're making progress. Like getting back to that road trip analogy you know if you if you have a flat tire uh, an hour from your home and or your car breaks down that's a pretty serious obstacle that may get you rethinking your road trip uh, and then you have to reconsider well maybe this isn't the road trip for me or maybe i need to go home get my car fixed and plan another trip so yes there are going to be some uh, obstacles that can't be overcome that were unanticipated and those are the kinds of things in life that we just have to uh, deal with when we encounter them. Some of them we can anticipate, some of them we can't. So uh, there again, I mean, even if you've really plotted out your goal map very carefully and you encounter one of these things, you can always stop, reconsider, reformulate your goal map and, and maybe change some aspect of it. Like, well, maybe it's not attainable. Maybe I'm off on this journey to attain something that really I, I finally figured out I can't attain, whatever that might be. I don't want to uh, sound defeatist about it, but there are things in life that we set as goals for ourselves that we recognize once we're into the process that, wow, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I'm looking at Joel because you've been on a heck of a journey. And, uh, you know, congratulations to you for what you have done and persevered through and you've achieved in your road trip to becoming a minister. And it's a, it's a great, but I'm sure you encountered obstacles of some sort or another along the way that maybe, and I'm not gonna put words in your mouth, but maybe at some point got you thinking, well, you know, is this really the right road I'm supposed to be on? Do you wanna share anything about that, Joel? I, the first thing that popped into my head was I, I haven't had a flat tire, but I have run out of gas a few times. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly right. Um, yes. but no, that, that's a great point. And, you know, I, I, so it personally in, in that pursuit, you know, the biggest thing is timetables. Um, I struggle personally with setting realistic timeframes for things. And it's a reevaluation of, I, I think I can attain it. It's just, I need to rethink the, the compression of time that I've put on myself and, Maybe I've got too many things going at, at once. Um, maybe do this one first and then that one. There you go. And that's a perfect example because at the beginning of our journey, we have a timetable. And I don't know about you, but I've been on trips in my life that the timetable quickly got 
tossed aside because it wasn't working and it wasn't realistic. And so, yes, I mean, one of the first things we might do is adjust our timetable. Not to be defeatist and say, well, you know, maybe instead of next month, it'll be in six months. It's an easy out sometimes, but to take a realistic look at the timetable we set for ourselves, there's no problem with readjusting and reevaluating that. And that's, as you say, that, you know, sometimes it, it becomes more evident once you're into the process. So there we awesome. go. Awesome. Yeah, thank, thanks for that uh, clarification, Mark. It's great. Um, okay, the next question has to do with uh, accountability partners. So have you ever had an accountability partner? And maybe could you share some guidance on, on navigating that relationship, that, that process, and maybe sort of the things that you would employ? What parts of the strategy would you employ an accountability partner for? That's another great question. Um, trying to think back on a goal where I did, I mean, you know, in my my goal that I start out with of being a better husband, I have a built-in accountability partner. <laughs> so, uh, and so for me to engage her and say, okay, this is my goal. Uh, these are the standards I've set for my goal. And you know, this is the really scary part. I want you to hold me accountable to them. So is that a wise choice in a marriage? I will leave that to the pastors on here to tell if that's, <laughs> thank you for laughing, Belina. I mean, yeah, I think it is. I, I, I think by articulating your goals to another person, particularly your wife, and saying, you know, I want to be held accountable to this. I'm saying, I'm giving permission to say, don't let me get by. Don't let me, you know, sneak out the back door on this. So I think accountability partners are good ideas, uh, whether a spouse is a good example of that. In some cases, yes. In some cases, maybe not, depending on what the goal is. But I also think that good friends uh, make excellent accountability partners, especially when you explain to them, as we talked about here with the goal map, what's the purpose of this goal? This is what it's going to do for my life. So by asking you to be in this role, I'm asking you to be a, an important actor in my life and in the success of my life. Uh, so I think they can be very valuable. There's always a risk when you engage people to hold you accountable because when they do and you find it unpleasant, uh, you need to deal with that uh, because you've invited them to be in that role. So I, I think that, yeah, I would, it depends on the goal, obviously, but there are some goals that really lend themselves to accountability partners. So I'm a big, big advocate of that. Awesome. Great, great guidance. Thanks, Mark. Um, so there's a, there's another question in the chat um, and also remind everybody, we do have a, a decent amount of time left. So if you do have questions, um, please, please post them and, uh, and we'll, we'll get them to Mark. Um, so the next question is, what is your opinion, if you have one, about Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Uh, I read the book. It was many years ago. And I think uh, he makes a lot of good points. There are lots of great self-improvement, self-help books out there. And that's probably one of the classics. Uh, there are others that are also more Christian-based, you know, that uh, I would advocate uh, can't come up with one right now, but uh, uh, my wife and I went to a kind of a marriage seminar a few years ago that it used a lot of those principles. So uh, I'm, an, I, I'm a believer in using whatever tool you find useful. If it's going to give you a, a head start and it's going to give you support on this journey, then I'd say use it. If you find it to be tedious or burdensome or uh, it's not really lining up with the, the approach you want to take, then I would say don't use it. But uh, generally speaking, I think uh, Covey's book is probably, it's not a bad one. It's a decent, good one, I'd say. Uh, you know, he articulates these seven habits and uh, I think they're valid. Excellent. Thank you. Um, oh, and then the other, somebody else, uh, same person, um, Melissa suggested purpose-driven life. Right, uh, Rick Warren's great. I mean, again, uh, these so-called self-help books, 
uh, are exactly that. Yeah, you can make of them what you will. Uh, it depends on how diligently you apply them. Uh, if you start to get into it and you find that it's not really syncing up with your approach to life, um, move on. But uh, I know a lot of people, especially in Rick Warren's case, who found uh, the purpose-driven life to be a very helpful model for uh, kind of organizing the way they do things and uh, very much like the goal map, you know, it, it, it's a pattern, it's a, it's a plan uh, for getting your thoughts together and giving you a, a way to really pursue your goals, uh, your, the things in life that are important to you and certainly having a purpose and identifying what that purpose is and then the means to reach that purpose very in line with what we're talking about here. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, so I've, I've got more questions for you. Um, no one else has a question in the chat. So if you have one, go ahead and, and pop them in there. But I'm more than happy to um, fire off some of the ones that I have. So uh, a specific question that I have, um, talking about uh, the obstacles that we face, um, I'm thinking of a very specific goal, but I think this applies to a number of things. So the, the classic example uh, and people that I've experienced is, is reading through the Bible in a year. Um, you set a goal, your timetable is a year, it's perfect, you've got an, a date, you're gonna attain it by, um, and then January 4th hits and you miss it and now you're a day behind. Um, and then you read two days and then you miss a weekend and now you're three, so it, it snowballs. Um, so could you talk about maybe knowing that that's an obstacle, um, what are your thoughts about building in things like, like leeway, um, you know, people on diets talk about, uh, they used to talk about cheat days, but the new term is celebration days. I don't, I don't know if everyone knows that. <laughs> I heard um, that. So, yeah. So could you talk a little bit about building in um, those sorts of realistic ways that uh, knowing uh, human nature, uh, uh, what are your thoughts on, on those um, within, within goal setting? That's a, a great question. I think one of the worst things we can do is when we hit that first pothole uh, and we miss a day or whatever the, the uh, goal is we set ourselves and then we miss that standard is self-condemnation because then that starts a whole downward spiral thing. Oh, I didn't do it yesterday. Now I, I've blown it. And so what if I miss tomorrow? And, you know, so that starts you on a whole negative route of thinking so i think you're right you have to kind of build into the goal map the idea that there are going to be pit stops along the way and you're going to encounter roadblocks and and potholes and things that are going you didn't anticipate that are going to slow you up so if we use the analogy of a, a road trip again you know i'm driving from here to new jersey to see my family and uh, didn't account on the the you know, the highway construction that was going to send me on a 60 mile detour or whatever. Uh, you know, I can say, oh, well, you know, I might as well turn around and go home because I don't feel like going three hours out of my way or whatever. Or just say, well, this has happened. It, it, it has a lot to do in my mind with our frame of mind and our determination to reach a goal. Uh, we need to think ahead that we're going to face obstacles. That's a part of life. And I'm sure everyone on this class has faced an obstacle or two in life and how you surmounted that obstacle, how you faced it, overcame it, or were defeated by it. And, you know, I, for one, have been there. The worst thing you can do is like start the blame game on yourself and, and become uh, defeatist in your thinking. You have to say, Tomorrow's another day. I know it sounds kind of Pollyanna, but hey, it's a fresh start tomorrow. I can, I can pick up where I left off. And so I, I think uh, we need to realize that that's going to happen. I don't know any perfect life where everybody gets exactly what they plan to get. You've got to adjust to the, the curveballs that life throws you. But uh, I'd say become a good curveball hitter and get out there and, you know, get up to the plate again and keep going. That's great. Thanks, Mark. Um, and so uh, there's one more, there's another question here. Um, a great question. So in your experience in coaching others and working with others on goals, um, what are some memorable goals that people have achieved that have been a cause for celebration? Yeah, well, I was a, a, 
a leadership slash business coach. So my clients were often uh, very goal oriented. Many of my clients were financial advisors, for example. So it was easy for them to set very specific enumerated goals of how much money am I going to have under management this year? Because that dictated their income. So their goal was to achieve so many new clients and have a portfolio of so much income. And that's what they hired me to hold them accountable for. And I was happy to do that. And then we would plot a course. Okay, how are you going to do that? How many uh, client dinners are you going to have? And invite them to bring their friends. How many other strategies are you going to pursue that will lead to achieving that goal of more clients, i.e. more business? So that's a very kind of tangible way of thinking about a goal from a financial perspective. I've had other uh, clients who are business owners and, you know, they would come back to me and say, you know, I just want to be a better boss. Sound familiar, right? Okay, uh, let's whip out that goal map I sent you and let's work through that because what does that mean? And so, yes, we would talk about, okay, being a better boss means uh, engaging with your employees on a regular basis if you're not uh, asking personal questions about, you know, their families becoming more involved in their lives as people and not just employees. So there were a lot of strategies that we would talk about that would help them think more about their employees as human beings and dealing with all the challenges that come with being a boss, an employer. Uh, my wife was a solo practitioner orthodontist for 30 years. Uh, I did number of workshops with her staff and her team. And this was one of them. And we, we talked about personality styles, which you've also done with FPC, you know, the whole uh, PID thing, uh, the DISC model. And that was at once enlightening, but also some found it disturbing because, you know, some people, and I'll even say that when we did it at FPC, there was one person in particular that I remember taking great exception to the idea of being pigeonholed as a particular personality style. Well, we all took the online uh, assessment and this is what it said. It was a tool that led us to this understanding of ourselves. And some people would, didn't particularly like the outcome of that, even though it was probably, in my opinion, very accurate. So when we would have these uh, debriefs with my wife's staff, uh, we would go around and say, uh, if you're not familiar with the DISC model, uh, I won't go into it now, but it basically pegs you as a, a dominant leader, uh, a very interactive person, a very, uh, on a uh, personal level, very interactive with groups, and then very kind of laid back and uh, detail oriented person. And at the end of the day, they had to admit that it was pretty accurate. Uh, when we started talking about specific examples in the workplace, it turned out that my wife had her staff perfectly positioned based on their personality styles when she didn't really use that as a guidepost. Her support team, her uh, assistants were all high S's, which is very supportive, very personally interactive. That's a good thing if you're in an orthodontist chair and they're tweaking the braces on your teeth. She, on the other hand, is a high D, which is very directive and in charge and do what I tell you to do, which a boss needs to be. Trust me, it comes in to be a challenge sometimes as a spouse, but hey, let's not go there. <laughs> so, uh, and then she had a, her desk person, front desk person was a high I, which is very interactive and very people back and forth lots of personality, all of her patients love this person coming in, making appointments and so forth. And then the C, which is the very detail oriented person was taking care of her books. So it turns out that she really had the right people in the right places based on their own individual personality styles. So I was a big believer in that when I was a business coach and I used that tool frequently and it turned out to be a very helpful tool uh, for a lot of my clients to kind of rethink how they interacted with their employees. 
awesome. I don't know because, if that answered the question or not. It, it did. That's great. And there's a, I have a perfect follow up uh, to that question. So are there um, certain personality styles that are better at achieving goals than others? Oh, wow. These are all good questions. I would, and that's not what I've thought about. I would say no uh, off the top of my head because each personality style sets a goal, in my opinion, according to their personality style. So they're already working with the internal wiring, you know, in their, their head that makes them a certain personality type. So, you know, when they set a goal, I'm trying to think out loud here, like a, a high D might be to, you know, reach a certain financial status or something like that. Something very uh, uh, identifiable, very material, let's say then they're gonna think about that in terms of the, the SMART goal map, uh, the SMART goals is, okay, what are the steps I need to get? Like my um, financial advisor clients, you know, once we started saying, okay, this is my goal for this year, I wanna have this level of income, we would break that down and we would say, okay, how do we need to do that? Whereas if I were working with a uh, high I personality, which I have, uh, and, <laughs> you know, that would be more of an interpersonal type of goal. Like I want to be a better person. I want to be a better leader by being a better, I'll say, friend to the people that I lead. Well, what does that look like? How do you achieve that? How do you identify that? Is it more personal interactive time? Is it whatever that may be? So I'm trying to think back on some of the times we spent, um, you know, I work with Jim, for example, through a lot of this years ago, uh, I did some coaching for him and Valina too. So we, you know, we worked through some issues that were specific to their, their roles in the church. And uh, so each, each of those was different because they had different objectives in what they were trying to accomplish. So, you know, we would kind of model the roadmap, the goal map to the objective. And depending on what, if the objective was to, uh, I can't even think of what it might've been now, but so every, every objective is determined by uh, what the person is trying to achieve. And then you build a roadmap to that objective based on uh, the things we've talked about here. I don't know if that was an answer. <laughs> That's great. No, that's the best answer uh, I've heard. Um, and we're, we're just at eight o'clock. So it's a, a great way to wrap it up. Because um, essentially, I think what you were saying is that no matter who you are, what position you're in, or how you're wired, um, you can set goals and be, be successful using the, the smart goal format and the, and the goal map. Um, well, Mark, I personally, and, and on behalf of everybody on this call, um, I thank you for, for presenting this information for, for coaching us through this. Um, for sharing the material. Uh, so if you if you haven't gone online, um, the the handouts are there and available for you the, um, to set your goals and to to map your progress. And and Mark, thank you so much for sharing this information, these tools, and um, and I, I can't wait to hear reports of how um, everybody is finding success with their new smart goals in 2021. What a great way to start hey, the new year. That's a great way to hold people accountable, Joel. You should kind of set some up, <laughs> something up there on, online, perhaps. There we go. Well, Casey, Casey's got attendance. So uh, yes. we're here. We're going to, we expect to hear great things and to hear about your progress. We're going to hold you all accountable. There you go. Uh, Mark, thanks so much. This was awesome. You're the best. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Good night, all. Bye. Good night, Bye. everybody. Thanks for being Bye. here. Thanks, Mark. Good You're stuff. Welcome. Good stuff.